Hope you had a great break. Windows Azure loves IT professionals. We're here teaching you away. I'm David. And I'm David. And we are here to teach you about Windows Azure. Yes. <laughs> so now we're getting into building, right? And yeah. we have this thing called Active Directory. Some of you might have heard of that. And uh, there's probably some reasons why you might want to run Active Directory on Windows yeah, Azure. Pretty much every workload we're going to talk about needs it. You mean you need authentication? Yeah. What? Oh, come Crazy. on now. Come on. Well, to, to break this into two parts, uh, this is going to be a short module. Why should we even care about it more specifically? Uh, and then secondly, what are some architecture options that you might have uh, as you think about Azure and Windows Azure AD? First off, there's some confusion out there that I want to clear up with this. A little history behind uh, Active Directory and Windows Azure Active Directory. All right, you've got this user, right? This guy, uh, you know, back way back in the day when we had this thing called BPOS or Business Productivity Online Suite, uh, we realized that there's people that probably want to use this cloud service, which is now Office 365, and they need to authenticate their users, and they might not necessarily have a, you know, directory uh, that they they want to use on premise to synchronize, but we still need to authenticate them. So what do we do here, right? And in this case you know, effectively, right, this guy is going to connect to Office 365. What do we do? Well, we created this thing, as we now call Windows Azure Active Directory. And that would enable this guy to, without anything dependencies, to be, to authenticate into a directory service, right, to log into the service. We took all of our many, many years of knowledge on Active Directory and put that into effectively a cloud service, because a cloud service has different kinds of properties, things that an on-premise directory doesn't necessarily have. But I know, like many of you, you have an on-premise Active Directory, and you probably want people to authenticate up to those cloud services so that you don't have to have multiple logins, usernames, and passwords. What do you do about that, right? Well. There are a lot of different synchronization options, and we're going to break that down for you in the next module. But for now, I just want you to understand the differences of the two. In this particular module, we're going to be covering Active Directory. As you see here, Windows Azure Active Directory also is good if you have your own application. There's a lot of things, Office 365, here we list CRM Online, Windows Intune, but as a developer, you could also write your own applications that synchronize with ACS, and ACS could then potentially authenticate to Windows Azure AD, right? Or, yeah, or in, in, in different kinds of ways of that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but uh, the point being here, uh, to, to clarify, running Active Directory on a virtual machine inside of Windows Azure is not the same thing as Windows Azure Active Directory. Those are two different deals, right? And uh, there's sometimes confusion around that, uh, and hopefully this makes things a little bit clearer. To, in this module, we're going to be covering running Active Directory on a VM in Windows Azure. OK. Next up, what are some reasons why you might want to run Active Directory on a VM in Windows Azure? You've got this corporate site, uh, happens to be in Las Vegas, and you have this data center. Well. The first thing you might have, right, is some applications up there. You've got a cloud service, you've got SharePoint, maybe remote desktop services up there, and you need, right, you need to have those applications be able to work in the event that perhaps the big red X of death comes down upon your, your VPN tunnel. Ah, uh, Right, and now all of a sudden you've got these services that are in the cloud that are running, and they need to still have authentication. Uh, well, that's where having a DC up in Windows Azure would become handy, right? You don't care about that. Well, what's another scenario? What about disaster recovery? Well, let's say that you have you have that site up there in Windows Azure, and now an even bigger red X of death comes down upon your entire site. Oh, oh, oh no! Yeah, it blows up your whole site, and 
Now what, right? People can't authenticate locally. Maybe your rack of servers just totally went down, power went out, a disaster blew up your site, whatever. Um, and well, a couple different things. One, you could possibly still have access to the DC through your own tunnel. You could open up even right another tunnel. You could have another site up here. This is maybe your DR site up here. I'm writing with a mouse, so it looks pretty sloppy. <laughs> but, Don't but, tell everyone you're writing with a mouse. That's his real <laughs> handwriting. <laughs> but, so you've got this guy, right? You could have this, oh, we're going to draw a little guy up here, right? Here we go. And this guy, right, could now authenticate possibly from a different site, right? Because they've, you know, floods hit, they're moving somewhere else. They now can authenticate. You've got an up-to-date copy of your database. That's, that's another scenario. Additionally, right, if you still have those applications up there, <clears throat> you might need to authenticate to those. Um, that could happen over the internet, right? You could open up ports to your, your public website, and if your public website uses the, the AD auth, you still have access to that even if your entire site goes down. These are some different reasons why you might want to run AD in a VM in Windows Azure. Okay. Now the question is, what do we do to... How, what are the options to architect that? What does that look like more practically up in Windows Azure? There's a few different options. And this, this particular option, um, you really are not putting a domain controller in Windows Azure, but you're simply enabling that VPN tunnel from your on-premise site, which does have Active Directory, up into Windows Azure. Now, this option, right, I mean, this is... Generally, probably not something you're going to do unless it's a very, very, you know, <laughs> minimal impact uh, across the WAN. And I mean, there's really a kind of a niche case, I suppose, here. But for the all intents and purposes, right, you probably aren't going to want to do this because you're dependent upon the VPN connection. And there's also the delay of connecting over the wire and all those things. Kind of the same reason if you had a separate branch office, right? You probably, in that branch office, depending on the situation, you may or may not want to put a DC in there. Same yeah. kind of consideration goes here. And unless you've got a super fast network connection, then you know, you're going to have latency to deal with as well. Machines trying to read the directory from the cloud and having to go all the way back through the wire to um, on-premises AD, um, you know, that's, that's going to take time. And also, we charge you for outbound bandwidth, right? So you kind of want to try and mitigate against that. Right, right. You want to minimize that and have the best performance up there. Or not, cloud. I mean. Or I, not, I, yeah, I, maybe not. Yeah, it depends on your situation. I like our right? stock price going up, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. Uh, well, let's move on to the next options that we have in the list, okay, shall we? Uh, the next one that we have is running Active Directory in Azure only. And the key thing to point out here is the fact that there are two totally different domain names, right? See here you have Contoso, and over here you have Fabricom, in which case you're really just running an entire domain. Oop. You're running an entire domain only in Windows Azure, right? And, and in which case you may have a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel, but really you don't need it necessarily for the authentication piece. Uh, you're, you're really just, you have a tunnel for whatever other reason. But AD is just a standalone domain controller by itself in that, that, that site, right? Nothing too fancy about yeah. that. The last option, which I think probably a lot of folks are interested in, which is what we kind of touched on on the scenarios uh, at the start, is that you have an on-premise domain controller and you need to extend <coughs> that authentication up into Windows Azure. Right, you you want people to authenticate uh, using their corporate credentials in in uh, in the VMs and things like that that are up in, in Windows Azure itself, and this is the scenario that I'm going to demo for you here in just a second, but this this makes a lot of sense, right? Because you know you you have some service that's up there needs to have authentication. You're going to have a local domain controller so that all of those VMs up there can can log in off. Is, is it really a scenario though where in production, we wouldn't have one on either side. I mean, you know, you could put your domain controls in the cloud and come back on premises, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, you want to go to, you're going to want to control and mitigate against that connection, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm not sure that there's a scenario other than 
perhaps building demos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in a lot of demos, we just kind of have the domain control in Windows Azure. In fact, sometimes we have the domain control in Windows Azure, and and we pretend it's there's a one on premises, and we we don't because it. We, we have a lot of VPN connections that have nothing on the other side of them. Um, but I think for most cases, when, when you're in production, you're, you're going to have the, um, the domain controller on both sides of the, the connection. I think David summed it up earlier. It's just like setting up a branch office. So you're going to need that kind of local presence to make sure everything is performant and, and also just deal with you know, outages and that kind of thing. Right, yeah, just, just like you, know, you would have an outage potentially with a, a WAN network link on a branch office, you might have an outage in the VPN connection, and so you still want those users in that branch office to be able to connect. Same yeah. kind of scenario with Windows Azure, right? Okay, uh, one other thing I want to cover, and then we'll get into making this real for you in Windows Azure. Let's go to the last slide here. Um, and this just talks about um, the cloud services and how you might want to do things, right? Um, it it sometimes you know you may have read stuff in the past that says you have to have a separate cloud cloud service for Active Directory. That isn't that isn't the case. Um, although you might there is a, a situation where you might want to do that. Um, and remember, I mentioned to you earlier where the first time you spin up a VM inside that subnet, um, it gets that that IP address. And if you want. Um, there to be no issues or no doubts at all <laughs> if you are happen to be tearing down and spinning up environments that that particular VM gets that IP address when it first comes up, um, then that could be a reason why you might want to have a separate cloud service for your, your domain controllers. Yeah. But, um, but there's really no reason why you need to do that. And like I mentioned, there is, <laughs> there is, a, there is a long lease time. So as long as you're not Ideally, you, you probably don't want to do this, as long as you're not deleting the, the VM for your DC and bringing it back online, right, then that, that machine should always have that same IP address, right? There should be no reason why it would ever change. Yeah. Um, and, and that's something that's a little weird for IT guys because they're like, oh my gosh, it's DHCP. Ah, and even like, you know, when you go through the wizard, it'll say, ah, oh, warning, it's DHCP. But it's, it's a pseudo DHCP because it's got such a long and, lease, and right? And usually I want to run my own DHCP server. Like, I know how to do that. And, yeah. and even at home, I run my own DHCP server. I know. Um, and you all probably do that too. But in Windows Azure, you, there's, there's a little, you lose a little bit of this control because we're providing the DHCP server and that makes people nervous because they want to spin up a DHCP server in Windows Azure. And of course, we have to protect against rogue DHCP servers in Windows Azure, so we, we kind of don't let that work. Um, equally, putting static IP addresses on machines, not a good idea there either. You'll sharp lose connectivity to those machines um, yeah. as well. So just, just a couple of good tips for you there. Okay. Uh, let's go back to my demo slide because there is a couple resources there I want to highlight, and then we'll go into my demo of getting this done. The, the first link up there is really good for if you have questions specific to, to all of the nitty gritty details of what about XYZ on running a DC on Windows Azure. We'll talk about many of those points as I go through the demo. But also if you want to know how to do this hands-on or you want to step out and do a hands-on lab with this, you can follow the, the HOLs that are there and uh, for those of you who are fancy can, can deploy a, a domain control entirely using PowerShell. Uh, that's that's something I wanted to make sure you're aware of here before I dive in. Okay, well, let's let's go back to uh, the scenario here of of I have a, a domain controller that I need to deploy, right? So remember earlier we deployed this this David VNet over here, and okay there. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's mine. Okay, so let's wait till we get the right uh, machine up again. Maybe I need to close. Good in, job. I wasn't the, playing. Let me end the slideshow Good job I wasn't so that uh, mine sweeper there wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> you're safe. You're safe. I know you're an avid mine sweeping player, but you yeah. know that's uh, you're you're covered. I'm covered. No, you you were caught doing PowerShell. I was caught doing that's PowerShell. A, yeah. Isn't that that's horrible? A, that's a, how can, yeah. <laughs> Caught. Uh, oh, you're safe now. All right. Well, okay. Let's um, <laughs> let's go into the console. And we remember we had this this VNet. Well, we deployed that David VM there. And at this point, and this is something that you want to think about early on, because when I look at this VNet and I go to configure it, 
right? Um, if I try and check this, I can't because I've already deployed a VM to it. Now, if you get into this situation where you've set up a, a, a virtual network and you haven't gone to connect the site to site before you've deployed a VM, that's no problem. You just need to, you know, delete the VM and that are all the VMs in there and bring it back up. But ideally, if you're planning, <laughs> right, <laughs> you're planning, you would set up that virtual network and you would connect the site to site VPN first. And once you do that, I'll give you kind of a sample uh, a VPN connection where I've, I've gone back into configure and I've checked the box to say, hey, connect to the local network for this site to site connectivity. And you'll notice here, you've got this, this local network. This is a really important one to highlight as you plan um, for Active Directory and the, and the connectivity, right? Because this local network, that is how Windows Azure knows where to route things, yeah. right? Back to your on-premise. So um, if you go into, and it's, it's not quite intuitive, because when you're within the VNet, you're like, okay, what is Office 40 on-prem, right? You have to go back to the top here and then go into the local network sec section. And here you can see, you know, right, this, in this particular VNet's case, I have Office 40 on-prem. Um, if I wanted, and I, you know, let's say my networks have changed on premise, I could go into edit this and then choose additional IP address ranges for Azure to know that, hey, that's something I need to connect back to when I establish my VPN. Once, uh, once you have that VPN in place, it will look, um, actually, let me take one step back. Uh, if we look at, once you check that box, right, the, what, what it will look like is this. Okay, you're gonna have this. Uh, you're gonna have this gateway, uh, or you're gonna first have this this option. You're gonna say, say choose to add a gateway, and what that'll do is it'll take some time, but then you'll have this public IP address for you to be able to connect up to. Um, and this is so that you can configure your VPN tunnel to be connected, right? And in this case, it's not connected because well, I've done nothing with this other than check the box and enable the gateway. After that, you'll notice there's this there's this option to download the VPN device script. This makes things a little bit easier if you don't want to have to manually go and type in all of the VPN settings for <laughs> and, and, if, and if you actually have the right device. Right, <laughs> right. So if you go to this list, right, we have a, a number of different things, Juniper or Cisco, Microsoft. Um, Microsoft is for the RRAS, right? Yeah. Um, Cisco, you've got a number of different devices here. Um, this this will help you out, but it's not necessary, right? It's just more of a to get you quicker along yeah. the path. And and if you have the wrong version of the firmware, and you try and run yeah. the script, <laughs> I can just tell you now it doesn't work. Okay, <laughs> save you the suspense. <laughs> it's uh, you know it's obviously there's no way we could test for every device all the time with all of the updates, but it at least gets you going in the right direction, nonetheless. Um, <clears throat> when you are done connecting, you'll have a network that looks something like this. Uh, with this dashboard here, you can see that um, we'll have a, a connection that shows up uh, for the site to site was, was enabled. In this case here, you can see all of my different VMs that are there, and you can see that the gateway is connected to this IP address. Um, that's really what you want to set up first, right? And there's documentation on there, more specifically how to do that. But really, that's the, the, the basic steps, right? I mean, the only thing I'm leaving out is configuring the Cisco device or whatever other VPN device you have. You know, after that, the tunnel comes up, and now you've got a site-to-site -site connection yeah. working. That's kind of your first step, right, for this, this uh, scenario that we're talking about with, with Active Directory. And um, so I'm going to go back to my David VNet I had earlier. And remember, I had this David VM. Well, this David VM um, is, is now you know, on this virtual network. Let's just assume that it's connected back to our corporate network. And what we'll do is, is log into this, this machine. And I've spared you the, the suspense of installing the role of Active Directory because, wow, <laughs> yeah. click, wow. Click. click, 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 and oh, the, the role is installed. There we go, right? We could have 10 minutes of awkward silence while. <laughs> That could be exciting, but be. you know, <laughs> but uh, I mean, because we do have David and David, we can entertain. And we are live. We, that's right, we are so live. We can edit stuff out. There we go. That's right. Um, okay, so we've got the role installed, right? But here's here's the one. Um, here's the if you think you're super, uh, you know, getting going with your. <laughs> Your, your Azure, and, oh, I know DCs, and I'm just going to connect up, install the role, and then I'm good, right? Important tip, all right? 
<laughs> There's this thing, uh, issue with caching, right, in, in Active Directory. So you kind of need to install another disk. And we'll explain this here more in a second. But let's go in, just for the sake of uh, the GUI here, we'll keep on with that. And let's go into my David VM and let's attach a disk. So if I go into attach and empty disk, and uh, I'm going to call this David VM dash, uh, let's just call it NTDS, and you'll see why that makes sense in a minute. Um, and then the host cache is none. All right, and remember I kind of hinted at this earlier. Um, by default, your OS disk has caching enabled. So the Active Directory database, if you just go through and forgot about this step, and as you went through it, what would happen is potentially you could corrupt your Active Directory. Now, will it work? Sure. You can go through AD and <laughs> spin up a DC. <laughs> but what you really don't want, what you really do not want, right, is the scenario where, hey, I've got this great service and you get it all up and running, you got your DC up there, and you've got all your services running and you're like, awesome, we're good to go. And then all of a sudden, because you forgot this step of the data disk, the Active Directory database gets corrupted. <laughs> Yeah, and that would be bad. That, I'm guessing it's that, like, that would it's probably like be not the good. Streams, right? Right. Yeah. So you so you might have like uh, let's say corruption or object corruption inside your Active Directory database, and being my roots in Active Directory, that is not a fun task to go try and find out orphaned objects or or objects that are are corrupted. Um, that can cause all kinds of yeah. weird issues, and yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah, so. I, I've heard it's like crossing the streams and the world will end as we know it. <laughs> so. I, don't, I don't know about the world ending, but definitely not a fun scenario. No. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, let's keep going. All right, let's, so we got the data disk on there, and let's go into the David VM, and, and the, you know... I'm going to wake up in the morning, and I'm going to be like, I'm a VM. <laughs> You're a VM. <laughs> well, we're both VMs, right? <laughs> We've David. got the David Affinity Network and the David Virtual Network, it's, right? Because we're on the David so Cloud times, Service. People are going to say VM, and I'm going to go, what? Huh? What's that? It's, is it a no, David? No, answer it. It's my name now. Oh, David it's David. VM. David VM. David VM. What's your first name? David the. D v VM. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway on, we on. digress. All right. So here, uh, you know, just like if you were to pop in a disk to one of your servers, we see that we've added a disk there, a 10 gig disk uh, we just attached earlier. Of course, first I need to initialize the disk just like anything else. And then from there, we're going to go in, create a new simple volume, click next through this wizard. Um, and again, you've got, you, you got the option of F drive letter, which we'll just pick as the default. We'll uh, label this NTDS, and you'll, that'll make more sense in a minute. We'll click Next, Finish. And right now, it's going to create a new disk drive, format that, and we've got additional storage now for our VM, right? Um, so while that's going, while that's firing up, I'm going to kick off the, the configuration of promoting this server to a domain controller. Um, and there's... This is important to go through just for one main reason. There's one big step in here that you need to, to find out. In this case, I'll just say David uh, is awesome. Thank you. Dot com. That's a good, that's a good root domain name uh, for us to all have, right? <laughs> uh, and then, you know, uh, we'll just choose our, this is, you know, our password. Okay, domain force functional level. DNS options, whatever, right? This is not really anything new than what you're used to. Um, David is awesome is our NetBIOS domain name as well. <laughs> Woo! All right, and here is where the key thing is that you need to know. Because if you just whip through this wizard, you might miss the path part. And this is where it really is, is important, right? So if you go here, by default, it's going to be C drive. Instead, I think by now we should have had our volume up. Oh, there we go. We have our NTDS uh, F volume. And at this point, um, you know, we're going to choose F for all of these. Okay. Now, um, we're going to choose F. And then one other thing, which after we click through this, right, so now it's going to, all the database files the, are going to go to the, the right drive. We're going to click install. Again, hey, we can't find you know, the DHCP, fine, no worries. There's all these warnings are, are not a problem. We'll click OK. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna backtrack while that's running, <laughs> and I'm gonna state one other thing that you need to do. And this really should have been done after your virtual network setup. Okay, Ooh. but but <laughs> but 
fast. Because I'm because I want to time optimize our experience here, right? I'm going to go backwards in time and say, oh, my v, my virtual network has just been created. Well, what do you do when you spin up a new branch site in Active Directory? Come on now. Oh, you asking me? Yeah, oh come gosh. on now. <laughs> do you uh, have DNS. Do you have DNS? I know. <laughs> yeah, you don't know. Get coffee. I'll get some sandwiches. coffee. Yeah. Go somewhere. Yeah. Well, you know. For those of you who are not Active Directory inclined, or not Active Directory challenged. I keep glossing all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what you're probably going to want to do is go to Active Directory Sites and Services. Ha ha, how about that, right? So in that case, what you're going to do is set up a new site for uh, Windows Azure Active Directory. In this case, we'll just choose New Site. Uh, we'll call it, uh, of course, David Azure Site, because that's pretty awesome, right? And then we'll click OK, and we've got a new site. And then, of course, we're going to specify our new subnets. Um, in the cloud, remember, we have 10.0.10.0 slash 24 is the subnet that we have. And that's going to be associated with the David Azure site. Now, in this case, of course, I, you probably aren't going to have default for site name. You're going to have your whole Active Directory structure, that whole yeah. deal, right? But this is just to make sure you think of that. And it's also to highlight the fact that you know Windows Azure Active Directory and I'm sorry Active Directory in Windows Azure is not some rocket it's science not it's not really much different than you just setting yeah. up a new site in Active Directory as if you had a separate branch office right we are helping you extend your data center into the cloud right so what what is setting a site for the for the uninitiated like myself yes. mm -hmm. what does setting up a site enable me to do yeah, yeah, well, okay, so let's say that you just accidentally forgot to do this whole site thing. Well, uh, what could happen <laughs> is that uh, whatever services you're trying to authenticate to, they might not optimally choose their local authentication source, right? You also might have replication, additional replication traffic over your VPN network that is completely unnecessary. So creating a site essentially lets your servers in Windows Azure know that they belong in this site and they should go and look for resources in this site first. That's right. For domain controllers and all that kind of thing. That's right. right. I get it now. That's right. That's right. So another big step, not just a, oh, I've got a new site, but it, it could have a big yeah. impact on things totally. not working very well if yes. you don't do that step, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, I, let's go back and just see if this, this guy's done, but I, I think it probably is. And really, you know, that, that's, yeah, we noticed that it, it rebooted, so that means it's probably, it's probably all done. And, and after it comes up, right, you've got a now domain controller inside of Windows Azure, um, and, you know, you're, you're all set to go. That's, that's really it, right? I mean, I, don't, I think that's, this that's the pretty, main thing. This was pretty painless, really, right? I yeah. Mean, we set up a virtual machine connected into the virtual network, we make sure we have a site defined, and then we just run DC Promo, next, 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 except. Except the path. Except the path. Remember that one, Remember right? the path. Remember the path. Remember, the Remember path. to set up the site. Remember the path and don't cross the streams. Don't, <laughs> wait a minute. That's a different <laughs> Wait a thing. minute. That's, um, yeah. And then, yeah. then you're good to go, right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. You awesome. Know? What so, about DNS? Again, DNS. I keep saying DNS, don't I? DNS. <laughs> well, DNS, uh, you know, that's partly when you go through the wizard nowadays with, with Active Directory, it's going to do a lot of those things for you as long as you have the sites defined properly. So if you set those sites defined properly, Windows Azure will automatically, I'm sorry, Active Directory will automatically know it's in this new site and it will configure the, the appropriate DNS records yeah. there. One other thing I do, tip I do want to point out is if you, <laughs> if you go to create that first VM in there, before you have... Um, anything up on that site. So for instance, you create a new VM and you've set a DNS server in that virtual network and you fire up the VM and you're like, oh, it doesn't have internet access. What's, what gives? <laughs> it's because it's trying to, trying to resolve that's because, its That's DNS because it's trying DMs. to get its yeah. DNS to itself potentially or to a DNS site that you don't even have. So that's another important tip to point out also because if you're going cross site, right, what you're going to want to do is go into, and I'll, if you want to um, snap to me here on the, on the demo screen, uh, on your virtual network, right? Uh, let's say, like for instance, my one that's already working here that that is configured well. I've I've got I've got here. Um, this is a real production deal that I have, and you'll notice that I've got two uh, the Azure DCs uh, named accordingly, right? But then I also have a domain controller on my on-premise listed here. 
So when you first do that DC promo across site, uh, and unlike what I did, which is just a, for a brand new forest and a new domain controller, you're going to want to make sure that DNS is pointed to your on-premise DNS server yeah. and, and AD uh, server so that it can find the appropriate domain and replicate and all that stuff, right? So that's another tip that uh, you want to make sure of. With that, I think, I think we've wrapped up this module. And uh, with that, stay tuned for just a second here, and we're going to come back with federating and or synchronizing Active Directory to Windows Azure Active Directory in about um, five minutes or so. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> Thank you.